Hello, my name is Paula Perez. I am the product manager of Kamika Large Geometry Secondary Ion Mass Spectrometer. Kamika is, as you may know, a manufacturer of magnetic sector SIMS instruments based in France. This talk aims to discuss the instrumental settings used for triple oxygen isotope measurements by LG SIMS. This work is the result of a collaboration between Kamika and the CRPG Nancy Lab in France. I would like to thank all my co-authors for providing this data and for their contribution to this work. When a solid sample is bombarded by primary ions of a few keV energy, a fraction of the particles emitted from the sample surface is ionized. SIMS consists of collecting and analyzing these secondary ions with a mass spectrometer. SIMS has been largely used in the geosciences field. It provides in situ local analysis of any type of solid flat material that can be maintained under high vacuum, thus allowing microanalysis of small minerals within their petrographic context or small domains in single crystals. TIMS is known for its high sensitivity, which is mandatory for high precision measurements and for reaching low detection limits from PPM to PPB for many elements. Both elemental and isotopic information can be obtained for all species in the periodic table from hydrogen to uranium and beyond. With a high spatial resolution from tens of microns down to submicrometer scale. SIMS is a powerful technique for in situ triple oxygen isotope measurements that has been used for more than 30 years. Since pioneering works performed on small radio sign microprobes in the mid 80s, tremendous progress has been made in terms of analytical precision, spatial resolution, and analysis duration. In this respect, the emergence in the mid 90s of a large geometry ion probe equipped with a multi-collector system was a game changer. These instruments provide significantly higher performance as they allow efficient transmission at high mass resolving power and the simultaneous measurement of the three oxygen isotopes. Further developments were implemented on Chemica LG SIMS since then in order to improve the analytical performance. This talk aims to first describe the classical settings used for triple oxygen isotope measurement, then presents a new analytical method based on a low noise Faraday cap detector equipped with a 10 to the 12 ohm preamplifier board. This work has been possible thanks to the collaboration between the Kamika R&D team and the CRPG ion probe team. For oxygen isotopes, there is a large difference of abundances between the major and minor isotopes, which requires an ion detection system with a wide dynamic range. Chemical G-SIMs are equipped with a set of electromultipliers and Faraday cups that cover different counting ranges. The synopsis of the chemical G-SIMs instrument is shown here. It includes a magnetic sector-based mass spectrometer, a primary ion column with two sources, cesium and oxygen, and a multi-collection system. It also includes a mono-collection system with one electromultiplier and two Faraday cups. The multi-collection system has been designed for isotopic analysis from lithium to uranium isotopes. It includes five moving trolleys and state-of-the-art detectors, each trolley being equipped with an electromultiplier or with a Faraday cup. Two extra Faraday cups are also included, and three mass resolution settings are available. The benefits of the multi-collection measurements are well known. Higher analysis throughput and or better precision. The electromultiplier detector is appropriate for the measurement of low count rates below 1 million counts per second. It is known that the EM gain drops with time proportionally to the incident ion rate. This aging effect can be monitored and compensated by increasing the electromultiplier high voltage. 
An illustration of the EM aging effect is shown on this figure. We can observe a significant drift of the isotope ratio without correction, but it could be compensated by increasing the electromultiplier high voltage using a fast iterative algorithm available in the Kamika software. The EM is also subject to the dead time effect. The accuracy of the dead time correction is crucial for count rates above 10 to the 5 counts per second. Even if a very good theoretical precision is attainable with an electromultiplier, in practice it is affected by the aging and dead time effects. As a consequence, count rates lower than 2 10 to the 5 counts per second are preferred to avoid the drift of the EM gain and significant dead time correction that limits the isotopic ratio data precision. The Faraday cup detector is appropriate for the measurement of high count rates. Faraday cup preamplifier boards can be set with 10 to the 10, 10 to the 11, and 10 to the 12 resistors, allowing different maximum count rates. If the resistor value is increased by a factor of 10, the signal-to-noise ratio is theoretically three times higher at a given intensity. Therefore, for a given counting time, the precision is expected to be better for a 10 to the 12 ohm compared to a 10 to the 11 ohm resistor. The adaptation of 10 to the 12 preamplifier boards was done recently on Kamiga LG SIMS instruments. This figure shows the long-term stability of backgrounds for Faraday cups equipped with different resistors. As expected, the reproducibility for Faraday cups improves as the resistor value increases. Oxygen triple isotope measurements are performed using cesium-10 keV primary ions. A Gaussian primary beam and a small raster are used to ensure flat bottom pits. The normal incident electron gun beam is used to neutralize the charge buildup on the sample surface of minerals. Negative secondary ions are accelerated in 10 keV. And analysis are performed in multi-collection mode using an axial collector of the monocollection 417O and two off-axis collectors of the multi-collection for 16 and 18 ohm. The axial match resolving power is set as 67,000 in order to remove the OH interference on 17 ohm, whereas a lower match resolving power is used for the measurement of 16 and 18 ohm. Automatic controls are implemented in the analysis routine in order to guarantee high reproducibility. One run typically takes 7 to 10 minutes. Until recently, two different settings were mainly used to perform high-precision triple oxygen isotope analysis by LG SIMS. I recall that 17O is measured on an axial detector. Settings 1. 17O is measured on an electromultiplier. A small primary beam diameter can be used, less than 10 micrometers, allowing analysis of small minerals. However, even if the count rate for 17O is kept at 2, 10 to the 5 counts per second or below, a careful monitoring of the EM drift is needed, and the EM high voltage adjustment must be done regularly. This limits the internal error on delta 17O at 0.3 per mil. For these conditions, the count rate for 18 ohm measured on a 10 to the 11 ohm Faraday cup is about 1 million counts per second, generating a larger internal error on delta 18 ohm, typically 0.5 per mil. As a consequence, the long-term external reproducibility on the standard is relatively poor, higher than 0.3 per mil for both Delta 17O and Delta 18O. Settings 2. 17O is measured on an axial 10 to the 11 ohm Faraday cup. The primary current 
needs to be increased in order to reach 1 million counts per second for 17O measured on this type of Faraday cup. But to the detriment of the spatial resolution because of the larger beam diameter, around 20 micrometers. Typically, the internal error on delta 18O is quite good, 0.2 per mil, but higher for delta 17O, 0.5 per mil. Results show that the long-term external reproducibility on the standard with settings 2 is better than with settings 1. However, settings 2 are not appropriate when only small sample areas are available. Settings 3. 17O is measured on the axial 10 to the 12 ohm Faraday cap. Count rates as low as 3 10 to the 5 counts per second or 17O can be measured, while keeping an internal precision better than 0.5 per mil. For settings 3, a small primary beam size can be used less than 10 micrometers, and still achieve reproducibility similar to settings 2. The use of a 10 to the 12 ohm Faraday cup opens a third path for triple oxygen isotope measurements by combining the advantages and by mitigating the inconveniences of settings 1 and 2. Also now, a practical application of settings 3, using a 10 to the 12 ohm Faraday cup, to triple oxygen isotope measurements. These type of measurements allow to constrain the origin and conditions of formation of extraterrestrial materials, and therefore to better understand the formation of our solar system. LG SIMS is perfectly designed and has long been used for the study of three oxygen isotopic compositions of primitive meteorite components. Figure shows an example of a chondrule with small olivine grains that yield complex chemical zoning. On the right side, one can see the three oxygen isotope diagram of 34 analyses performed in the olivine grain of the chondrule Perform using settings 3. Typical uncertainties for delta 18O is 0.3.4 per mil and for delta 17O, 0.4.6 per mil. With the use of a 10 to the 12 Faraday cup detector, it is now possible to properly characterize mass independent variations of oxygen isotopes within zoned olivine grains in chondrules at a fine scale, less than 10 micrometers, while keeping a precision better than 0.5 per mil on delta 17O and delta 18O. Large geometry seems in situ technique is particularly suitable for the study of isotopically heterogeneous and or small samples that require both high precision and high spatial resolution. Recently, large radius high and microprobes were equipped with 10 to the 12 Faraday cup preamplifier boards. Data presented here show that Chemica LG SIMS equipped with 10 to the 12 Faraday cups are now able to provide triple oxygen isotopic measurements in various kinds of matrices with a precision better than 0.5 per mil on delta 17O and delta 18O a beam size smaller than 10 micrometers and in less than 10 minutes per analysis. Kamika LG SIMS instruments equipped with 10 to the 12 Friday cups currently represent the state of the art of the technology for in situ measurements of triple oxygen isotopes. To finish, I would like to thank again all my co authors that kindly agreed to present their data in this talk. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me or Joanne Villeneuve from CRPG Nancy at these email addresses. Thank you so much for your attention.